Well, hello everyone. How you doing? Well, it's Thursday, November 2nd. Only two more months left in the year. Wow. Time does go by quickly, does it not? Well, fall has arrived here in Colorado. Some places winter. It's one of those cloudy, you know, not cold yet, but 40s, cool. And this is when you start pulling out the, the ski wear, which, you know, really is very comfortable, I have to say it is. So how are you doing? Trust everything is going well. Thank you for tuning in. Hope your day is progressing um, as you have planned and thought. Who knows, right? So I've been doing some thinking today. These kind of days really do invoke where you can get a hot drink and whether it be a book, whether it be just that quiet time. Um, I like sometimes, in fact, often to be able to just find that quiet place and kind of let what I have been reading, what I've been hearing, filter through all of the levels that we all have. And what I've been trying to remind myself, particularly this year, is that I don't know everything. I realize as well is that the only way that I can truly grow is that I have to accept the fact that I must have an open mind. And it becomes very difficult as you become older, because as we become older, the traits, those things that we were taught uh, many times as children, really begin to amplify in our personalities. You know, two type of octarians. And those are people who I see that are in their 90s, maybe mid 80s. <laughs> Seems to be two type. Those that have I think figured it out, that are content. They understand some things and they have come to resolution. They've come to understanding. And then there's others that are just bitter, angry. And I often think, you know, how do we get to that point in our lives? What makes us so rigid? in our thinking that we begin to build these facades that, by God, I am right. Um, yeah, I can take what you've got to say, but you know what? I'm right. I know. Been around long enough. We all say that. All those who say those things, raise, their, raise your hands. Okay, there's mine. See? And the only way we break that and the only way that we can uh, begin to dissolve the crustacean that forms over our attitudes, our minds, is becoming rigid in thought. Not even allowing the thought that would counter what we believe. And, you know, there's both a good side and a downside to that. The good side is you'll begin to have a journey that I believe all souls were meant to have. And that is a, a journey of discovery that you know that there are no absolutes 
And when you come to that, then it allows you to begin to understand that the precepts, the concepts that define us individually, how those are actually put together. And by keeping an open mind, the risks part of that equation is that you have to filter out just a lot of nonsense. You really do. You know, a farmer who gets into the field for the first time will have to spend, depending on the soil, many places are rocks. I mean, I have had gardens where I swear to you, the rocks were growing. <laughs> I mean, they weren't there when I planted the thing and put the thing up and inevitably they come to the surface. And I think that that's what we have to do as well. As knowledge increases, confusion is its companion. And that is, again, the downside to that. Because you can really get off onto tangents. You become so adamant, again, um, in a thought. And all thoughts are just that, they're thoughts on absolutes concerning nature, whether it be the nature of man, the nature of nature itself. And when you do that, that's where bigotry comes in. I once heard someone write and wrote me an email, he said, you know, it really offends me when you call us, um, you know, bigots. And I said, well, look up the meaning of the word. It's anyone that has a strong opinion that differs from what someone else is saying. It's like define normal. What is normal? Best definition, Star Trek Generations, the movie where I believe it was Jordy who said, what normal is, what everyone is, and you are not. So think about that. So I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of reading, um, actually putting together a program on gravity versus magnetism. Very interesting. And oddly enough, as I continue to do all this reading, research, and that's what it is, this is a video documentary of my journey. And I'd encourage all of you to do your own. Listen, YouTube's a great channel. Um, think about this. If it's nothing more than your legacy, because we all are going to die at some point. That is the inevitability of this birth into death. And that's what we are. We're birthed into death and we die into life. And so we know that that's the inevitability. Um, actually working on a business plan to really begin to put, I believe, in every community, uh, transition centers where everybody can come in and we can really begin to put, you see, what we do here in Western cultures, particularly America, you know, America has so much influence that unfortunately it's quashed so many great cultures. I, I really particularly enjoy seeing, um, particularly in, in my area, we're having an influx of many different cultures and it's refreshing. I mean, you see it in the stores, uh, new foods that I had never actually been grown exposed to. And this is healthy, it's good. And so you should do this for your legacy to those 
who will come after you. And it's a great way of doing this. Remember, your comments would also be that legacy as well. So I always caution people, think twice before you hit send. So realizing for myself now, and I've spent times, I, I love the fact that on these cloudy days, I can't see the mountains. I can see three of the 14ers from where I live. And the 14ers, for those of you who are not orientated to Colorado, um, is that we have 14, 14,000 peaks here in the Rockies. And so along the front range where I live, there are clear days where you can literally see 100 plus miles. And on those days, I can see those three peaks and they're now snow covered. And on the days where the cloud deck comes down, and this is something you really got, I, I, I love about Colorado is that when you live next to mountains, you see a lot of interesting weather anomalies. And one of the things that I became very much aware of is that you can really get the sense, I live about 6,000 feet of elevation, the cloud deck. You can really see it when it lowers. Um, consequently, you can also see when that fog, which forms that layer here, many times on the front range down where we live, the mountains will be clear. You can actually see it. So anyway, I've been thinking about some things. So I put together a little presentation. You know, I like doing that. And so let me get this put up for you. Hold on one second. All right. So here's just a couple of my thoughts on this Thursday, this very typical fall day. I put this together. And this is what I'm coming to the conclusion to on a lot of things is that no matter what the theory, no matter what the ideology, no matter what the science, one constant that can be said is that we exist within the confines of our brains. It's just the fact. Now, I think from the day one, however we got here, whether it was by transportation, transplantation, or origination, we exist within our brains, our reality, our perceptions, our concepts, who we think about as individuals, how we uh, operate and perform in a, a society, how our belief systems are manufactured and brought in to become foundation of how we identify ourselves, how we see the world. Each of us see the world differently. Now, we may see the same picture, but we will each individually interpretly, interpret it differently. So this is what I have come to the conclusion is that if there's nothing else, nothing else, I know that this is what we are. Now, having said that, here can be manipulated. And that is the challenge. For our realities are no different than this abstract piece of artwork. Because you can say quite literally, this is indeed what reality is. If I were to look in and have the ability 
to push through all the defenses, all the facades, all the walls, and look into who you are. Strip everything away. This is probably what I would see of your reality. Because to me, and you would see the same thing with my reality. It is no different than this. Again, we live within the confines of an organ called a brain. That brain produces electrical signals. They travel along a path called the synaptic path. Our minds, which are uniquely and identifiable to you, only to you. And you will construct your own reality. So I've been thinking, all right. I live on a planet, I live in a solar system, we are part of a galaxy, we've made instruments that can now peer into the past, only the past, which brings into question about our present. We live in what we call the now. But yet, all around us, all we see is the past. We've gotten so good at looking into the past that we have now reached the ends of our universe, our science, our understanding, our wisdom is rapidly changing. It used to be thought that the universe was infinite. Evidence would suggest that is not the case. Evidence would suggest that our universe is almost like an egg and that there is something now on the other side of what we define now as. This is called the cosmic radiation background. What you're looking at is beyond description. We don't know what it is. It's not us. It's not even of this reality. But it now appears that it encapsulates everything, which now is leading more and more scientists, astronomers, astrophysicists, to begin to accept the idea that our universe is but one of probably an unimaginable number surrounded by this cosmic veil. Now, beyond this, we know nothing. It's open for interpretation. You could have the probably an idea that very well could be, what is this? Because this is beyond humanity's ability to actually phantom at this point. There's too much going on. distances that are beyond calculation, but apparently finite in many ways. There is something that's beyond 
our universe. What? How? We don't know. So this cosmic microwave background radiation is called CMBR. It's a relic of the Big Bang. It's the afterglow of an initial fireball. It's really strange because when you begin to think about this, the afterglow, right? Uh, it was discovered in 1965. So again, folks, this is recent, recent science. Uh, it's now being studied in detail and the radiation comes from an area of what they call the decoupling of matter and radiation in the early universe. This was back when the neutral hydrogen atoms were first formed. Yeah. So man's current concept is that this is how it all came about. Uh, we're, we, we don't know. I mean, we forget that science is nothing more than a child's nursery rhyme. That's all science is. It's the same thing with religion, but let's get back to science. It's nothing more than a nursery rhyme because we can't figure it out. Oh, we'll get there. And maybe this is the right theory. But the nursery rhyme will be continued to be written. Because that's where our science is. We're in the infancy. Now, as long as the bipedals walked on this terra firma, they have all gazed upward. Tried to figure it out, tried to make sense of it. And we still are. So the image of the universe, which they're estimating to be about, you know, right about 400,000 years after the beginning, and this is how they, this image of temperature fluctuations, this is how they got it. And then along came Hubble, and now we've got even more that are out there. But it seems like we're peering back to a end of a finite universe. By the way, this is how our science today says that this is where we are. I just want to bring it out. So let me just point this picture out. Notice the spirals? Very symmetrical, right? Not out here. They say that the Milky Way is almost 14 billion years. They say it almost formed right after the Big Bang. That's how old of the universe, I mean, galaxy it is. I believe that this is evidence of where we once were, but that's just my theory. Because it really comes down to a matter of perspective, does it not? As to how you see, whether you see it to the right or the, whether you see it to the left. Now, if you have the ability to maintain in the middle, well, you've actually accomplished something. Because there, the path is less hindered. But we do know this. When you think about your religion, or maybe your lack of thereof, you think about who you are, not us as a species, as you. You know, I cannot accept that this is just what a person experiences, and that's the end. Whatever length of time it is here, no, I don't accept that anymore. It's illogical, it makes no sense, and it truly is 
a mind band. Things are changing in our nighttime sky, folks. Changing rapidly. Makes me wonder how many out there are looking towards us. I wonder if they have the same belief systems. So here's the thing. All we see is the ancient past. And when you begin to stop and think about this, everything about our belief systems are of the ancient past. In fact, it's so bad that it has hindered and restricted us from really going forward. Which leads me to this thought. So bear with me on this. I wrote this to a friend and I wanted to share it with you. Who is to say what is right or wrong? All we are, all we in our society and culture is for the most part based on an ancient Hebraic culture. And here again, many renditions since that time have been made that we are told to believe that all these ancient characters actually lived. And if that is the case, which it is, then why do we not give the same beliefs of actual existence of all other ancient cultures, including their gods. Now, I am not saying there is not an infinite being. What I am coming to is that humanity has yet to be able to fully understand, comprehend, or apprehend God, the concept of God, much less the worship of such. We pride ourselves on our technical achievements, and we mock with pride the old ways and the ancients. Yet, we revert to the ancient one's beliefs in their gods. We have no new revelation today where a god or any gods is speaking or writings are being made. There is no new writings. Oh, apparently that time has since long passed. No, instead, we rely 100% on those ancient writings that today no longer have the writer's intentions, meanings, or understandings. It is literally impossible for a 21st century mind to comprehend, apprehend, in any form or fashion, a writing of over a thousand plus years. It becomes difficult when you compare this to our own country in the United States that where we deal with a constitution written nearly 250 plus years ago. And today we struggle with defining, arguing, debating, what was the intent? What was the meaning? What was the author's purpose? And yet we exempt from any rational thought the same scrutiny to ancient writings that no longer have any meaning whatsoever. Other than one's individual owns interpretation of such. Yet we condemn others for their beliefs. No matter how we look at the human history timeline, it's still only a guess. 
we're discovering now that our history goes way beyond any 5,000 years, any 6,000 years, any 10,000 years. The evolution of humans from a single cells to today. Now, many would absolutely just be it hoard by this. Many have said, I don't come from a monkey. I am unique. I was recreated. I was created unique. Maybe. Maybe not. What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. Isaac Newton. Have you ever thought then, how old are you? Now, I know that we have a clock that goes around the sun, and that constitutes a year for us, and that's how we measure ourselves. But apparently, that is not actually how you would actually be able to judge yourself. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> judge yourself. Yeah, as to your age. I recently took a test. They say that I am actually 44 actual years old. Chronologically, I'm 62. Isn't that interesting? I want to point out this. In your lifetime, you alone have lived multiple lives. Stop for a second. And literally, in your mind, close your eyes and step back and look into the past. You will see yourself as having multiple lives. Those of you that once lived are not you today. But yet you retain the essence of those lives in you. I ask you, are you the same person as you were when you birthed into this reality? Of course not. The answer is no, 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 my friend. But I do know this, the journey continues. Whether it's in this plane of existence or the unfoundable, unlimited, unimaginable others, I know the journey continues for all of us. So there you go. Some of my thoughts. I hope maybe some of it resonated with you. If you have a different thought or opinion, let me know. Be respectful. One of the things I'm also learning, it's not the really big things that you do that really count. No, it's those small acts. It's those small moments where you stop and you have that cognitive moment of awareness. I can either go that way or I can go that way. And apparently those count a whole lot. So, all right, folks, uh, Friday night, be doing the live show. We're going to continue to talk about death. Um, I invite anyone who would like to come in on and share their story of a near-death experience. Um, I'm reaching out to some very fresh ideas, people that um, I have seen 
what they have put out there. And I think that they'll add to all of our awareness. And it's good that we get diversity of ideas. And I'll just say this, there are no absolutes. I wish there was. I guess if there was one absolute is, is that, let, let me rephrase that. Um, there is one absolute, and that is we all will find a physical death with these bodies. I think beyond that, it's up for grabs. I really do. I don't think anyone has got the full story. I mean, we're all looking for it. And it may be that each one of us have a piece of it. I mean, maybe one day we can reach that ascension that it's only by when we actually all work together on that level. I think the day is coming, folks, where you'll no longer have verbal language. Actually, it's the, it's the worst expenditure of energy when you act, talk about communication. The fact that I have pieces of flesh that I have to push air through that I'm forming in order to speak to you. Now, if someone was to speak back to me in, let's say, Japanese, I wouldn't know what you were saying, but they're still using the same process. I do believe that we'll get to that point where telepathy will be. And I tell you, when we do, just think about it. No more hiding. I guess maybe you could get really strong, you know, and like get this iron wall. It's impenetrable to thought. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see how that works out. All right, folks, thank you again for listening. Um, it's, it really is an honor to have you uh, take part of your day out to listen. I appreciate the comments. Um, and I have to say, I've actually had people who come in and have looked at the videos and the comments and they say, you, you've got people that are just, they're, they're respectful, they're kind, they can debate and disagree, but they're respectful. And I said, yeah, because they're smart. They're good people, good souls. And you are each and every one of you. All right, folks, uh, Friday night and we'll trying to get some other guests in we might have a show on saturday and then of course uh, the show that jeff and i do on sunday morning which is uh you know it certainly ain't church all right folks we'll talk real soon all right bye-bye be kind to one another